Some of these women left their husbands for another woman. Can you imagine being married 30 years and say, you look in the mirror and say, I'm a lesbian? Huh? Well, maybe you can't imagine this. I don't know. No. Molly uh, is honest to say that she cheated on her husband with another woman for a year. And now she has to make a decision about whether or not she's going to stay in her marriage. What do you want to know about her? I'll, why? I'll give you a chance in a minute here. Shirley was married for 10 years when she cheated on her husband with a co-worker. She sneaked around his, behind his back for about eight months. And after an eight-month affair, she left her family. Two sons. Incidentally, earlier in her life, she almost became a nun. <laughs> Lisa was engaged to be married. How long were you? Ten days before the wedding. She had met another woman, and she comes home from out of town, and she tells her fiancé. Did they get married? They did or they didn't? You don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, who's left here? You, Carol? You're Carol Lilligren. You were married for 30 years to a college professor. Two years ago, you went back to school and fell in love with a female classmate. Um, has three children, and she's now making a life commitment with another woman. I want you to know this is not altogether that unusual. Now, what in the world are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. First of all, I'm going to agree with whatever he's got to say here. Here are Charlotte and Pete Lumpkins. All right? 14 years of marriage. You've been together 25 years. You have eight children. When they, you, were, you were engaged when you were a uh, teenager. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, well, what's going on here? Uh, Charlotte? No. Tell us it isn't true, Charlotte. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, you gonna save this, or what? I've, uh, I've decided this because, um, I love this man, and, uh, we have been together since childhood sweethearts, 16 years old in a college. We decided that, no matter what I am, and I am a lesbian, that, um, he's, uh, he's everything that he said he would be. And when I took my vows of marriage, I intended to keep them, and I did. Um, we are a family of God. We love the Lord, and uh, he's been a part of that marriage and been a part of that relationship. So for the first time, as painful as it was to come out to him and tell him, I love you very much, but I think I want another woman in my life. And I began by telling him that um, no matter what, he has the option of choosing to leave the relationship if he wants to. I said, we can renegotiate this contract, and um, you have the right right now to get out of the marriage, and um, because at, at the time when I realized I was gay, um, he didn't know that he married a lesbian woman, because at that time, I didn't know either. I just realized this two years ago. So at that point, I said, two in the morning, we talked, and I said, wait a minute, you're not really my husband anymore. And I realized he wasn't. And I said, if you want to stay married, it's your choice. But if you want to remarry me, then you have to know that you're marrying a lesbian woman. Mm -hmm. Now, does this, um, does this future uh, plan, and, and, and we believe you about your love for your husband, eight kids, wow. Um, does, it, does it give you the option to accommodate this feature of your sexuality, or would you be a celibate lesbian? I, I mean, is it... No such animal. <laughs> so, so for good old Pete, then, uh, the deal is, you're, he's your man forever, always has been. Yeah. So you've never cheated on him in the traditional sense. No. And as far as you know, he's never cheated on you. No. Um, but the marriage, in order to be saved, would have to give you a certain amount of free time. The marriage is saved. We're going to stay together. It was, it was either, I was either going to come out and realize that I was going to give up everything, surrender it all, or keep it all and get on with my life. So I decided to keep my husband, my children, and get on with what else is out there. How's this working for Pete? 
when we sat up uh, <clears throat> one evening in the same conversation, realizing that we could uh, just kind of let it dissolve, uh, I thought about it again. I got very hard to think through the uh, uh, marriage vows, the whole thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I come to the conclusion that I had to just, uh, you know, getting back to the point of knowing, we always knew something was there. So when, when she finally came out, it, it answered the big mystery to me. It wasn't like, you know, my ego was shot or anything like that. It just finally I said, there was that's some... what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm and so what so was going on was something you really didn't... Didn't really know. It was incredible. Was it about attitude? What about you know? absence? What was it about? It was... It was magic. It, the magic. Yeah, the you magic. Know, it, was, it, was, it was like, I, I put it one time, uh, like we were like, we, we were like uh, a Prince story coming together. Like I was a knight in shine. Everything was there. But it's like when we would go... You know, like if you imagine that, like when the music was playing, it was fine as if we were dancing, but sometimes we were like, who was leading, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's leading here? It's like, who's in step? And everything would, and it would happen over different, different things, different issues, but there was a sense there that there was a part of her that wanted to come out, and the only way I dealt with it back then was just knock it back down. You know, just really, just... So just, you just, actually just had over. this unbelievable hint that could she, might she, really? Yeah, you know, by that, but I had any, I had no terminology of what to call it or what things were about or what to really say. And even right. in, uh, and even in respect to, I mean, her, her telling me sometime about what she felt within, I thought it was in that time maybe just being open-minded, who knows what it, you right. know, what it was about. But I yes. never took it as being, uh, uh, I know we have three of your children here. Is that so? Yes. What a beautiful, beautiful young man and woman we have. Uh, we should say that your children range in age from 23 to 3. Eight kids. Charlotte, is there a woman in your life? Um, no, but they have my number. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say this. Because I was raised in a conventional, traditional church, every time that when I wasn't in order, as they say, I would go to the sisters in the church, and I would tell them, I said, I'm having trouble with my husband, and they would say, you're rebellious, go home, discipline yourself, and I have another baby. Then they would say, and I would go and talk to her again, and they said, well, you're, you're, you're not in line with the word, submit yourself to your husband, and I have another baby. And then after that, I kept believing that there was something wrong with me, Phil. I knew there was something about me, but I didn't know what. So I would turn the pages in my Bible and read what I needed to do, and I did. So I continued for the rest of my life, these past 15 or 16 years, trying to figure out what it was. So I finally figured it out through a time of prayer and, and talking to the Lord. And he said, this is what it is. Hmm. Uh, buried all those years. Buried in me all those years. And I'm trying to fix myself, reading all the best books on how to appeal to him when he comes home, the joy of, and the being a wife and in the kitchen. And I read every manual there is to read about how a wife should submit. And I submitted. I got the kids to prove it. <laughs> and she would also many times go through these changes where she'd get the hair weave yeah, and I mean just kind of force this, uh, yeah. this feminine, feminine, feminine out and I, would, and I would sense that as a manipulation so that didn't really work with us as far as the relationship went. But, but again, getting back to when she even had to, when I realized she had to come, I realized when we sat and had this meeting, everything that I really felt and I demanded, I, it boiled down to me just realizing it was really selfish. I mean, yeah. and if I really loved her, I had to love her. As is. Yeah. Uh, or not Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, there's, there's got to be an award out here for this guy. I want you to know. It. <laughs> you had, I mean, this had to knock you down, uh, big yeah, man. No, just like I said, but it answered, like I said, for the positive. And you don't feel, else. it's certainly not the same as if it were another man, obviously. Yeah. So you don't feel in that sense? No, no. I tell you, I did. I would not go, give you a minute if I didn't say there was a point when I began to think it all the way through, just on my own, that, well, this could possibly leave. Because we went for like the, when, when, I, when she began to go through a time of real being depressed and suicidal, and it's not like her character. She's really outgoing. She was staying in the room, not eating, just really talking about dying, jumping in the river and all that. I began to reach out to people to try to get help, and I started calling up. I mean, I even went to the extent of women that I would view as such as being gay, of getting in touch, could you talk to help too? Because I couldn't really understand what she was really, what she was really going through altogether. So some of them advised me, well, the only way she's going to get through this is to leave you. So that got me kind of, kind of shook because I didn't want to really hear that. Right. So uh, let's remind this audience that you uh, have been together 25 years. Right. 14 of those years you have been married, and your marriage continues. Yeah. Carol, do you hear any uh, similar... Uh, Notes here to oh. this tune. You were married for 30 years to a college professor. Right, absolutely. 
Uh, you went back to school two years ago, and you fell in love with a female classmate. Uh, it was easy to um, finesse this because you were tutoring her, and so you'd call your husband, I assume, and say, oh, it's so late, I'm just staying here tonight. Right. No problem. Uh, your husband came home unexpectedly on the occasion of your being with your lover mm -hmm. in your own home. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, <laughs> So he's still walking around, I hope. I mean, that's a pretty big hit for a guy. Yeah, it is. But I'm sure that he suspected that there were some problems also because we'd been together 30 years and I was brought up in an old country family where when you marry, it's for life. I made a commitment. I was going to keep it. It was like leave it to beaver or whatever. I did what I was supposed to do and behave myself. Uh, but I still could never feel this connection with this person. I was doing all the right things, but I didn't have a connection. And so I had a feeling this marriage wasn't going to last. I mean, it lasted a long time, but the only way I could see to continue my life and get out of the marriage was to go back to school and get some education right. so I could get a job. Yes. Did you know about your sexual identity? No, absolutely not. So you didn't discover that you were a lesbian, and I assume this is mm -hmm. what you are comfortably going yeah. to call yourself now. Absolutely. Um, until you met this young classmate. Yeah. I assume a young. I don't know. Was it a younger person? Uh, younger than I am, certainly, but not, not a whole lot. Ten uh -huh. years younger. Huh? Ten years younger. And uh, so, you know, you just noticed that you liked being with her? I, I don't want to yes. put words in you, huh? Yes. Uh, a very strong connection and I wanted to spend time with her and I wanted to be near her I wanted to touch her and all the feelings of really strong love which I had r really never experienced before always connected well with women but never right never like this uh, and how's your husband in comedy is there a divorce final it was final just a few weeks ago yes and uh, how is he uh, he's ra he's rather subdued uh, it really Did he shake hands when he said goodbye <laughs> So, the, so he, did, he was not able to say goodbye to you in any endearing way? He cried when the divorce decree was read, but um, his ego was terribly hurt, I'm afraid, and it was, it was too bad. Um, let me see here. Uh, three children, mm -hmm. ranging in age from? Uh, 14 through 28. And are they okay? They're fine with it, yes. The youngest one lives at home with me now with my, my partner and loves her dearly and is just becoming such a wonderful teenager right. because he has this warm home. So you've been out of the closet then for less than two years, as we might That's say. That's right. And, and uh, so you have now walked into the gay world. Right. A very, very complicated place to be today, as I don't yes. have to tell you. Now yes. you have the front row seat to homophobia, mm -hmm. to, um, to gay bashing, I assume. You've seen some of that verbally and otherwise. Wow. And I, I really don't understand it, uh, because the people in the community, in the gay lesbian community, are fabulous, fabulous people. They're, they're kind, they're outgoing, they're um, comfortable to be with, and they're, they're just the neatest bunch of people. I, I just don't understand yeah. why there should be gay bashing. It just doesn't make any sense. Lisa, you were here, the one that was engaged to be married. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't tell you, did I, what they decided? She, where were you? You were out of town. Uh, you didn't meet this woman just before your wedding, did you? Uh, no, I met her about a month before I was due to get married. I was um, living in my hometown with my fiancé, and we had wanted to relocate after we were married. So I relocated a little bit sooner to uh, another state and got a job out there. And um, while I was out there, I um, met a woman. And um, I was very attracted to her, of the same thing that she felt. And even though I felt love for my fiancé, and I felt that he was the man I was going to be with for the rest of my life, um, I fell in love with a woman. Was it your first un recognition that you were a lesbian? No. Um, you, you suspected it? Yeah. You weren't sure? No, I, I don't think that I really um, discriminated between the two. I don't, I don't think I said, well, I'm a lesbian pretending to be a heterosexual. I just felt that I had the capabilities to love either or. It was the person that I would love and not the gender right. that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that when I went out, when I was living in this other state, that this woman appealed to me. Right. Now, this was a little over two years ago. Do I have yes. the calendar right? 
Um, may I ask how old you were at the time that you met, and this would be, have been your first, as we might say, intimate encounter with a woman. Is that so? That's so. Okay, and how old were you at the time? 21. And she told her fiancé. And they got married. <laughs> Do you like this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Makes us all feel better about ourselves. <laughs> wow. Boy, you must... Uh, did it shock you when you... You gave your husband an out, didn't you? Um, yeah, I went back there 10 days before we, uh, I was due to get married, and I told him that I was attracted to another woman, and um, I didn't want to get married, and I just didn't feel right about it, and we sat and cried. I mean, it was awful. It was heartbreaking, and, and I was sorry that he had to be there while I was going through this. And uh, the pressure was, there was a lot of pressure. He wanted to work it out. He didn't care. He just loved me. All he wanted was me. He didn't care what the package carried along. Yeah. He didn't want um, me to have affairs on the side with other women, but he wanted me. He loved me, and it didn't matter if I was this or that. It just didn't matter. Uh -huh. So we got married. <clears throat> Is there any understanding at all in the relationship regarding the uh, lesbian My side feeling? of your... Yeah. Sure. I've explained to him. Uh, well, two days after I was married, I went back to this woman. I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And it kind of was back and forth and back and forth for a while until I decided that I had made a commitment to marry him and I was going to go through with that commitment. And uh, no matter what, I was going to give it my best. And I felt I owed him that, and I owed myself that. I guess I'd like to know, and you don't have any responsibility to answer, but uh, are, you, are you committed to a celibate life as a lesbian? Well, well let me put it another way. <laughs> um, I assume, obviously, this is what your husband wants. Uh, look. I, you know, I, you know, I, now I know what the peeping toms feel like. I, uh, <laughs> but here's the point. You will have to forgive our curiosity. How do we keep a marriage under these circumstances? Does, is the marriage kept with your promise to your husband never to go out at night? Is it kept with an understanding that if you do, you will tell him? How will he hold up? This is uh, what we'd like to know. Well, basically, um, if something did happen, he would want me to tell him. All he wants me to do is be honest with him. Um, I don't think our marriage would last very long if that was the case. So I've just resigned myself to the fact that this is what I have to do uh, to maintain this relationship, to give it the best that I can, because I can't really go out of the relationship, throw my hands up and say, well, I'm going to be with women if I really haven't put my all into it yet. I see. So yep. you feel a responsibility to, the, to your husband oh, and yeah. to the marriage. Very much so. And you love your husband. Very much so. Are you there? Call her hi. Hi. Um, I have something to say to Charlotte Lumpkin. Yes. Hi, uh, Charlotte. Hi, this is Vicki, Bruce's friend. Yes, Your go ahead. Sister. Hi, Charlotte. I've always been proud to know you. I've always thought you were an excellent lady, and I'm still proud to know you. And I want you to know I still love you very much. God you know this you. woman. Yes. yes. Well, she thanks you for your encouragement. You know her as well, do you? And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> tired of hunting for your vacuum cleaner's attachments, get the new Dirt Devil Upright. It's lightweight, easy to use, and all the attachments are built right into the vacuum. So you can clean everything from floor to ceiling and edge to edge without stopping to find a thing. And because it's a Dirt Devil, it's packed with plenty of cleaning power. So stop hunting for your attachments. Get the new Dirt Devil Upright, the all-in-one cleaner that cleans it all. Carol, you baked this cheesecake. Mm. I can't believe you baked a cheesecake. Mm -hmm. mm. It tastes wonderful. Oh, I want seconds. Carol, I want the recipe. Mm. Not me. I'll wait till they come up with a nice, easy mix. Mm. Right, a mix with real cherries. Come on. Honestly, Carol, this must have taken all day. Yeah, no wonder you didn't have time to do your hair. 
<laughs> New Jell-O cheesecake, now with real fruit topping. You know, I hear Jell-O makes a good cheesecake. Back when I was a boy, Mom made a country fried steak that was so good we couldn't wait to sit down to supper. I always thought we should have one just like it at Wendy's. Introducing Wendy's 99 cent country fried steak. 100% beef, lightly breaded and cooked golden brown. It's new on the 99 cent super value menu. You can take the boy out of the country, but he still has to eat. Come into Wendy's, but hurry. Dave's only cooking it for a limited time. with 50% more sheets. So when regular Bounty's gone, Bounty Medleys keep on going. Pretty Bounty of my new Bounty Medleys. Pretty Bounty of mine. Let's go here. Shirley, you were married for 10 years when you cheated on your husband with a co-worker. Yes, I am. Um... You, and you actually snuck around for about eight months. I did, but I, I have a little different situation but... than some of these um, I knew I was a lesbian, and I knew, I suspected when I was, you know, all the time I was growing up, and, and um, when you got married? Oh, I knew I was by the time I got married. I had had... Lesbian affairs? Oh, certainly. And, you, um... You were a teenage, you came out, so to speak, in your own sense, intimately as a teenager. Uh, no, mostly, in college I had my first... I see. ...affair, and, um, but, you know, I can appreciate what Steve was going through, some of the, the non-acceptance, and I really couldn't deal with, with, um... Well, where I, it was a small, rural, midwestern town, and there is a lot of homophobia there. So I couldn't deal with, with that, and that's when I decided, okay, I'll go do the, the thing that everybody says you're supposed to do, and I got married to my high school sweetheart, and uh, we were married for 10 years, and it wasn't all that bad, it wasn't real good, but there has never, ever been another man in my life besides him. There have been some women, and then I met this fantastic woman and fell in love at first sight and we did all those really neat things like exchange roses and and um, hold hands and we just I don't know how to explain it we connected in a way that I had never ever connected with my husband in the whole 10 years that I knew that I went with him and we've known each other for gosh 15 20 years when we weren't strangers this woman no the, my husband oh I see and does the uh, does the relationship with this woman continue Oh, yes, we're, we're you committed to each other, and I left my husband, and I left my kids, um, which, by the way, was no easy decision yeah, to make. Yeah, we've already got sounds of disapproval from the audience here. Your boys, at the time you left them, are they both boys? Yes, they're both boys. Uh, we're six and seven. They are now 10 and 12. 10 and 11, huh? Right. Fix the math here. Um, and, and, and do you see them? Oh, yes, they come, they so, come and so visit. So your relationship and... with your children is amicable. Oh, it's great. And, and with your husband as well, your ex-husband? Um, more so now than what it was in the beginning. There was some animosity in the beginning, and he was struggling with the same kinds of things that, that Pete would struggle with. And, and um, you know, his sexuality, and, and um, then it was kind of like, well, gosh, maybe I can force myself on her. And that was kind of the deciding factor. I, there was a, one day when he tried to force himself on me, and that was it. I packed my bags, took what I could fit into a suitcase, appeared on my lover's doorstep, and I've been with her ever since. Uh, let's understand this now. After this euphoric experience with your, another woman, uh, in which there was just this wonderful mutual lovingness that included intimacy, after that experience, which happened in, after 10 years of marriage, you really couldn't possibly be intimate with your husband again. Well, our intimate, we never really were, in a sense, intimate. We had sex, but we weren't, you know, there was no emotions but, and feelings there. Right. But do I understand, then, that you really did, is, was there something that happened even after this, after the intimacy altered whatever might have been residue of affection might have been? Yes, it did. Molly? Um, you are married. Yes. And uh, you, you come with uh, glasses and a wig. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to provide you that uh, cover here because uh, you have to make a decision about whether you're going to stay married, so? That is true. You've been married for? I've been married for 
here for two and a half years. Um, yeah, does he know? Yes, he does know. I've told him. Yeah, and how'd that go? Um, I had an affair with a woman, um, which went on for about a year. Uh, after I decided that I'd have to make a choice, well, she asked me to make a choice. And so when that time came, I told him that this was what's going on and this is what I have to do is make a choice on what I want to do. Right. Um, he wasn't all that happy about it. Um, he was hurt, angry, confused, um, and which basically I was the same way. Um, because I knew I was attracted to women, but I had never came out and admitted it. I always used to hide it. Do you, do you still see? Oh, you, you, uh, so after that meeting, you've since met another woman, is that right? Mm, no, not really. Did you meet a woman at a convention to whom you are now attracted? I've, I've met a woman um, which I'm attracted to. Nothing's coming out of it, though. Oh, so um, you're not seeing each other then? No, we're not. Um, so you, do I understand then that your marriage at this moment then hangs in the balance? You, you have to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to commit to it. Is that right? That's right. Um, it was just that our marriage was having problems at the time. Um, I wasn't getting any communication from him. I wasn't getting any desires out of him. Um, he didn't want to talk to me, be with me, um, give me any compliments or anything. Um, the only time that he told me we, I was beautiful was the day we got married. And that was two and a half years ago. Um, and the woman that I had an affair with, she was there, she was strong, she had drive, and she said that the things that I wanted to hear, you know. She gave me the attention that I thought I deserved. So, that's how it... I see. Well, this audience wants to talk to all of you. And we'll give them that chance in just a moment. <laughs> At universities like this, clinical studies prove there's a way to lose weight safely and effectively without caffeine or caffeine nervousness. It's Dexatrim. Dexatrim helps you control your appetite so you can lose weight without feeling hungry. And no other weight loss product has more published medical studies to show that it works. In fact, studies prove that four out of five people lost weight with Dexatrim. Now that's powerful proof. Dexatrim, medically proven to help you lose weight. If you spend over $20 a month on long distance, you deserve to be treated better. You deserve frequent caller awards and a special customer service number. You deserve a whole new level of special service. You deserve to be a Sprint priority customer. Is this just another clever way to get that other phone company's best customers? You bet it is. theaters everywhere. Recently, Healthline magazine compared 16 popular diets. And you know what? Only Nutrisystem got a perfect score. Not Jenny Craig, not Weight Watchers. Only Nutrisystem. What does that mean to you? This is what it means. Final weeks to lose all the weight you can for only $79. Call 1-800-553-9292.
To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. This audience wants in. Yes, my good man. Thank I you. can't wait to get in. Well, I have a question for Charlotte. Now, you say that there's no such thing as a celibate lesbian, yet you also say you're going to stay faithful to your husband. How can you, I was wondering, how can you have your cake and eat it, eat it too? Because I live in a land that I believe and I serve a God that I'm free. And that's my choice in my life. When I die, nobody's going to jump in that grave with me. Nobody is going to stand before my God with me. I'm doing this of my own choice. Over here, please. I was just yes. wondering. Hold it. I was just wondering how your straight female friends are they supportive of you? Yeah. How are they reacting? Talk to about this? that, please. Mine's are just fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm no different. I Carol, mean, you just want... because I desire else to right. someone else. But they, it surprises us that they're all just fine. They, they have no. Well, I'm we believe you. Is there anybody with a different? Carol. I, I have a difference. I've lost a couple of my straight friends because they didn't appreciate my lifestyle. None of my straight friends know. They know today. <laughs> I'm, sympath I'm sympathetic to the women who discovered their sexuality later in their lives, but for the women who were aware of their les that they were lesbians before they were married, why did you choose to get married? It seems to me like you were destroying or complicating your own lives as well as the lives of other people and any children you may have had. Who wants to talk about that? Anybody? Shoot. I'm going to start here. You're always brought up to um, go in and find your husband and have children and have your little house and have your little white picket fence. They never tell you that you may be attracted to the other opposite sex. They never tell you that they're, you, you, they're, you're not brought up saying that there's gay um, relationships out there. So everyone tries to live that straight life because that's what everyone else expects of them. And they, some of them just can't do it. You know, deciding who you are and living your life accordingly is hard for every person in this room and everybody out there. And, you know, it's a question of am I with the right person regardless of it, whether it's a woman or a man that you are attracted to outside of the marriage. And I would just really like to commend the women up here who have come to the realization of who they are and were strong enough, you know, unfortunately, unlike our caller from Massachusetts, to really say this is who I am. I love myself anyway, and I'm going to go ahead and live my life in keeping with my, my beliefs. I think you guys should be convinced. And that's no easy thing to do. Hey, just hang on one second. We'll give it to you. Yeah, uh, Pete and Charlotte, how did your older children react to this situation? Do they accept it? Pete well, and Monica. I, I called, uh, she had to call and tell her mom, and that turned out very favorable, good talk. I called and talked talk to all the children, and they all were very uh, supportive. One son took it rather hard. But in the end, he wound up supportive, too. A very close family, and they've done a lot of things uh, together. You know, we traveled even together on the road for a long time. So very close. It was, uh, of course, uh, somewhat of a shock. They wanted to know why didn't we tell them back sooner when they were we younger. But you, again, it was, it was an accumulative knowledge before you really knew what was up. Nothing that you knew right away. Are you there, caller? Hi. Yes, I am. Go ahead. I have a question for the white female. Uh, if, well, we got several. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. For the woman who's uh, married to the man, if the other woman had been a man, would she have married, but, you know, not married her husband? That's a good question, because um, I was just going to address what he said. As far as if you're in a relationship, no matter what kind of relationship you're in, you always have that chance of being attracted to another person, man or female. And that's with every marriage. It's the commitment that's in, that's in your heart. And that's what I've been trying to work on, is the commitment in my heart that I've made to my husband. And as far as, um, it really has no bearing, man or woman. It, uh, to me, because it just has no bearing at all. Are you there? Hi. Yes. <coughs> How are you doing? Good. Ready. This is a son that's not supportive, and yeah. I'm still not supportive at all. Yeah. You're Charlotte and Pete are, are your mom and dad. Yes. How old are you? I'm not going to reveal okay. my age. All right. Well, you called in, and you wanted to say you love your parents, right? Yes, I do love my parents. Uh, but you, you're really disappointed about this. Extremely disappointed. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Mom knows this, huh? Yes. Ray. Do not... Ray. Yeah, he's... If a... I was born and my mom said, Charlotte, you have some incurable something, now you have to tell your children that you're going to pass it on to them. I would have had to told you yesterday, Rob. This is nothing bad about me. 
There's nothing inhuman or unloving about gay and lesbian people. God loves me, Ray. He validated my life. I have to validate other lives. And if there's one thing you'll have to know, Ro, that I love you and we love you, and nothing's going to change that between you and me. <clears throat> this, uh, we should say, this doesn't surprise you. You knew this is where his head was, I well, assume. This, uh, the, my, my children are... You are, have eight children, let me remind the audience. My children are part of me, and they will always be a part of me. Um, the people who I'm concerned about is the closest community. Um, I'm concerned with those parents that have thrown their kids away and that have literally cut them from the will. They have cut them from literally the resources of life. So yes. if, if I lose one out of eight, I know I'll have 800 more because I do want them. I do love them. And you're not giving up on this side? Uh, no, he's a part of me. And we'll be back in a moment. This pharmacy tip is brought to you by Revco. Revco, a friend for life. Before you take over-the-counter medication, get information from your Revco pharmacist. Over-the-counter medications may cause side effects, and some prescription medications are now available over-the-counter. Ask your Revco pharmacist to help you choose the right ones, explain how to take them properly, and check your records for interactions or overlap with your prescription. This pharmacy tip has been brought to you by Revco, a friend for life. And another, another thing. thing. Don't take it with, with orange juice. This leaflet explains everything about your prescription, and it's available only from Revco. Even if you had a prescription filled somewhere else, Revco will be happy to prepare one of our personalized patient advisory leaflets for you. Personalized prescription information and low prices. Seems like too much to expect from other drugstores, but exactly what you get from Revco. Why go anywhere? Who's doing something special to non-fat, cholesterol-free frozen yogurt? Dairy Queen. Who's giving it to you blended fresh right there? Dairy Queen. With your choice of fruit, chocolate, cookie, or candy flavors, it's the delicious blended fresh Breeze Frozen Yogurt Treat. Yogurt the way you love it. We treat you right. Dairy Queen. Don't start the school year off on the wrong foot. Shop at a place where you can save 30 to 70% every day on thousands of brand name school supplies. Office Max. Save 58% on a 12 pack of Faber Castell Uniball pens with Metal Point Rollerball. And get a Smith Corona typewriter with full line memory correction and word eraser for only $99. Office Max, the office supply superstore where savings is the bottom line. Fear and confusion grow in the Soviet coup, and now it looks like the coup leadership may be crumbling. We'll have a comprehensive coverage of today's madness in Moscow following Donahue. Hi, thanks for waiting. Go ahead. Yes, um, my question is to Charlotte, and I am going to be married pretty soon to a guy that I love very much, and I have beliefs that he might be gay, and I don't know if I should confront him with it. Uh, what, have you set a date? Yes, I have for March 2nd. March. Yeah. And and just tell me briefly, what what uh, what's the evidence? Um, letters from this guy that he has known for a while, saying um, stuff about them living together. Um, if he remembers this, he kissed when he kissed him on the shoulder and things yeah. like that. And and uh, I assume these were private letters that you shouldn't have read. True. So, so it's going to be hard for you to present him this evidence. Yes, it is. I had asked him about it before, but he has denied it, and I still... Right. Charlotte. Um, now, come on, Charlotte. We're counting on you. Don't protect the man from the truth. He's a man. He needs you to... He needs to know the truth. He, um, he needs to know that she's suspicious. He needs yeah. to know. He needs to know that you know. Don't go into any commitment marriage with a preacher and people with a lie. Oh, or with a doubt. With a doubt. You know, maybe this isn't true. His lover knows that we are getting married. He knows. And he knows. He don't under, you 
No, it's like... You're calling his, this other guy his lover. Well, I, I feel like he is. Your tuition is right. But well, I don't... Your tuition is right. Follow with your tuition, but get to a pastorship. Get people who can counsel and, you. And I think and you're saying, and don't walk down the aisle as long as you've got no, this baggage in no, your... No, don't do that. Right. Do that. Uh, I got, I'm running out of time, friends. we got the lines jammed here. Go ahead. I like, I like to take them in. 25 years we're together, but I've learned, people, being straight and talking to here and a lot of people that are straight, their whole hang-up is on about homosexuality is what people do. They don't realize that a gay person isn't what someone does, it's what they are. And it's not nothing that they can... Uh, I mean, I've been with her to see her fight, see her cry, see her go through every change and wanting to be changed and go through it. And I got a close-up understanding and that's been helpful for me across the board, you know, yeah. as far as really getting yeah. through. A lot of folks are just hung up on what they think about, they do and where they're at, rather than realize that's who they are, just like I'm black or just like what you are. You cannot change that no more than, uh, than I can change being black and 350 pounds. I have a question for her. Yes. Um, she says that um, with, with um, the men that she's going that they didn't have any communication or she was, he wasn't treating her well. I was wondering that couldn't another man do it instead of a woman? Uh, I see your point. Molly, you, makes the, you make the point. Incidentally, Molly's not your name. Um, <laughs> that your husband didn't, uh, was not very expressive. He wasn't endearing. He didn't tell you you were beautiful. He didn't do all the things that men usually do during courtship and then it's been absent. This, uh, this woman with whom you engaged uh, in a social way told you all those things. This woman wants to know, go find a man who will say those well, good things. Well, that's, that's understandable. Most everyone would probably do the same, just try to find it in a man. Um, I'm a little bit more demanding. I like drive. I like, uh, you know, honesty. I like humor. And just that I, what I was looking for just happened to be right there in my face. And I didn't know it until it slapped me in the face. And it just happened to be a woman, and there was no problem with me about it. And we'll be back in a moment. Yo play, low fat, calcium rich, with active yogurt cultures. Forty-year-old Vicky Gentry knows taste isn't the only reason to eat yo play every day. Some people. You tell them a Lender's bagel has complex carbohydrates, 20% more than a lot of cereals people call healthy. And they still think good stuff has to come in a bowl. Well, there you go. Lender's bagels. Who knew they were this good? You take so much care to eat foods that are natural. Consider that the next time you drink decaffeinated coffee. Sanka is decaffeinated by a remarkable natural process, using only pure water and nature's effervescence to wash away caffeine. With no artificial chemicals, that's why it's natural to drink Sanka. Sanka ground decaffeinated coffee. Gotta be smaller? Oh yeah, I love it when the package weighs about 300 pounds. You need a lot less. I don't like having to use a lot of detergent. It would never spill. I love it when it spills all over the place. I'd make it powerful. Yeah, we'd get the clothes clean. And it wouldn't dare fade my color. Definitely. Is that asking too much? Cheer with Color Guard. A scoopful cleans a machine full. I'm talking clean. Where do you go when you're going back to school? TJ Maxx. Bum, 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 bum. Vacation's over and summer is done. I'm just interested in the logistics of the relationship in terms of uh, Pete and Charlotte. Uh, what kind of time uh, working out they're going to do? On the weekends, is she going to be free? And does he have her permission to have extramarital affairs? Well, well first, okay, first of all, uh, it's, nothing's happening now. I've been together this time. That option is there. I would not take that option. I'm settled to where I'm at. I accept that as part and possible and packaged to who she is if, in fact, that happens. She's in the community, working that community, so I know it could happen, and I would accept it if that were to come about. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. You've been in the uh, the world both both worlds, and I'd like to know uh, what do you find is more appealing or not appealing in the woman versus the man? Who? Emotional. Emotional tone. Emotional, the emotional tie between another woman and the fact that you can relate with another woman. They know what you're going through, and not all women, but just it's just. I don't know. Pete is not the same as a lot of the a lot of the men. Yes. Not at all. I mean, my marriage, it was not possible. It was not a thing to consider. Can we make a go of it? It just was not. You know, and just because I'm a lesbian doesn't mean I'm not entitled to be happy. And because I love another woman, why should I have to suffer in a marriage that was not okay and that I didn't feel to be a total person in? Obviously, in Charlotte and Pete's case, he's willing to let her do that. My husband was not. Yeah, but you knew you were a lesbian when you got married. Yes, I did. And, and I did. one more time, how do you explain that now? Uh, what well, made... I, I was trying to do the thing like everybody else So it was does, about right? pressure and conforming and... Right, and in, in small town Midwestern city, it's not acceptable. Oh, I think this is a very honest answer. I don't know why that doesn't fly here. As long as there's a closet, we can expect those, a certain percentage of those people in it to try and prove they're not. Phil, I'd like to answer a question that these two ladies had asked. They had asked us, how can we love two people? Yeah. That's just like you love your mother, your father. I mean, it's possible. It's yeah. not that you have to split them apart. Yeah, I just want... Fretter challenges Sears, July 16th. Sears price on this Sony portable CD player was $219.99. A good price, but over $40 higher than Fretter's everyday price. Their price on this Magnavox TV was $422.99. That was more than $43 higher than Fretter. Two more examples why it's always better to shop at Fretter. Last night, Daddy came home real funny. For a while. Then he got real mad and scared Mommy. And she was crying and she said, Please don't pretend anymore. Get some help. If you have or love someone who has an alcohol or drug problem, don't wait another minute. Call Glen Bay now. Please don't pretend anymore. Get some help. For a transcript of today's show, send $3 to Donahue Transcripts, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 1007, or call 212-227-READ. I picked up a knife to like, protect myself because she kept saying that she was going to kill me. She killed her mother. Next, Donahue. See, you're giggling already. Are you there, caller? Yes, I am. You're Karen, right? Yes, I am. Um, you cheated on your husband with another woman, it says here. Yes, I was married for seven years. And I think one thing these people don't understand is they think if you're a lesbian, you hate men. It's possible to love a man and then realize that you're a lesbian later on in life. Right. That happens. Yeah. That's life. You said you're... That's all part of life. But you came out, so to speak, uh, with Bloody Marys and a four-wheeler. Mm, yeah, that's a long story, and I've been told I don't have yeah. time to go Did in, your so marriage hold up? Do what now? Did you get divorced? Yes, we did. Service is provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Advanced Formula Centrum with more vitamins and minerals, including beta carotene, than any leading brand. Centrum, more complete from A to zinc. Making furniture the right way and making it affordable. That's Broyhill. Broyhill brings the good life home to you. For the perfect weekend and the perfect frequent stay program, check into the new Drake, the only Swiss hotel on Park.